So welcome everybody. This is Slack training. I call it the most basic features and function training, Slack 101 quick start. Uh, and we have a, a lot of people here tonight from several different Color Your Community Green groups and other uh, Climate Solutions Accelerator groups. All of you are interested in, in different stages in how you use Slack and, and are eager, I hope, to learn about it. So we're going to get started here. Can all of you see the first slide of the PowerPoint? How do you slack a quick start? Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. So the topics we're going to cover very quickly, uh, let me run down them. First of all, defining slack. What is it? How you actually join. Some of you have not yet joined the accelerators workspace. So I want to cover how you are invited to and then join and create an account inside Slack. Okay. Um, how do you join a channel? I'll define what channels are, but how do you join them and how do you leave them? That's important. Sometimes you can get into channels that you really don't want to spend more time with and gosh, I might as well just leave it at this point, okay? How do you get control of notifications? I did hear some of you talking about wanting to know, when should I check Slack? Well, guess what? Slack can check you. <laughs> Slack can send notifications to you that are important based on what you want. So that's going to be important. How do you make sure other people see your messages? There is a way to do that. There's a way to call attention to a message that you place into a channel. We'll talk about how you do that. <clears throat> okay, how do you remember messages and actions that you wanna take in Slack? Seriously, folks, <laughs> if you're in a lot of channels, and a lot of stuff, important stuff is coming into those channels, there's messages, and you want to do something with that message later today or tomorrow or a week from now or a month from now, I don't care. How do you use Slack to set reminders for you to take action on some of the messages? So we'll cover that. Really important. Uh, all of these things that we're talking about are going to increase your satisfaction in using Slack, okay? How do you search? Well, we already had a question on that from Linda. So how do you use Slack as a resource? How do you search for messages, files, people, and channels in Slack? Uh, extremely important capability inside Slack, okay? And how do you upload files? Sometimes you wanna share a link I know Luann talked about that. She sent me a link to share, <laughs> okay? It could be an article. It could be a PDF document. It could be um, a Word document. So how do you put those files up into a Slack message or a Slack channel? And finally, I'm gonna point you in the direction of some other learning resources that if you have additional questions down the road, you can click a link and go to Slack's Help Center and probably answer your own questions. They've got lots and lots and lots of topics um, that, that will help you answering questions about Slack. If, it, if it's a more advanced topic or something that we didn't cover in this class, you can probably find it on your own in the Slack Help Center. Um, Section 13 will be Q&A. It's not on here, but I'm going to make sure that I make time to answer all of your questions and to make sure that I've covered your key important uh, interest areas completely to your satisfaction. So any questions at all before we start? One other, one other comment. The secret to teaching and training for me is tell me how it works, which I will do. Show me how it works and then let me do it on my own. Because if I don't do it on my own, guess what? You ain't going to learn it. <laughs> Simple as that. I will, sh I will tell you how it works. I will show you how it works. And your assignment, your homework is to do it. 
Okay, everybody agree for that? I want some thumbs up here. Are you? Do you all agree that you will do this? All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, normally, the teaching and training I always did remotely would would be involving lab lab exercises where I could monitor you doing it in a class situation, but. I'm sorry, we can't do that right now. <laughs> okay, so I just have to trust that you're going to do these 12 things on your own <laughs> as soon as possible. Don't wait a week. Don't even wait three days. Try to do it within the next day or two. Because really, really, you're going to remember a whole lot more the closer you do these activities to um, the, the, the session tonight. Okay, so... What is Slack? Um, I call it team collaboration. And it allows organizations, and we have really dozens of different organizations that are all in one workspace called the Climate Solutions Accelerator. And Slack makes it easier for us to work together. Now, it's not that there aren't some downsides to Slack. There are. There's some there's some some problems with it, but overall, the ability of Slack to reduce email communications, which are very inefficient, Slack serves as an alternative to many 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 emails that would occur uh, without Slack. So I feel overall the benefit of Slack is enormous to making our climate solutions groups work more effectively together. So here's the, here's the formal definition, searchable log of all communications and knowledge. And again, I keep going back to Linda's question, searchable log, Slack, searchable log. If you don't use the search feature in Slack, you're just not using it. You're just not using the entire capability of Slack. So that's going to be a very important part of, of Slack, because guess what? You can come into a channel and messages keep scrolling up like your, like your feed in Facebook. And pretty soon they're 20 feet above you. And you've forgotten where, where they were. <laughs> you forgot about what it was, but you remembered something about it that you really needed to take action on. Well, there's ways to, to mark it and there's ways to search for it. And I know it's, it can be frustrating if you don't know how to do that. And then you lose track of something that you really wanted to read or sign up for or whatever. So I'm going to give you some tips, tricks, and secrets tonight on how to keep track of the important things that you want to take action on in Slack without losing sight of them as they scroll by 20, 30, 40 feet above you <laughs> in the channel. Okay. All right. Any questions on what is Slack? That was chapter one. I think we covered it, unless you have questions. Okay. By the way, questions at any time, please, please bring up your questions at any time. Now, uh, a teeny bit more about what is Slack. What I want to do is kind of give you a little bit of a tour. Um, we call it an instant messaging application because that's what it is. You can be notified of anybody's message very, very quickly in a lot of different ways, okay? The left side, see the purple side here, the left side is called the, the sidebar. And that's where a listing of all the things that you can do, all the channels that you're a member of, all the notifications. Look at those red circles there with numbers in them. That means one thing, that you're being notified of an important message that is either uh, targeted to you directly or that's targeted to an entire channel. We call that the at channel. So a red circle means you have a direct mention, okay? White, a white bold means there's a new message in that channel. If it's a dull white on the background, there's no new messages for you in a given channel, okay? And the 
Slack system consists of a couple of different types of, ch of chats and messages. One is for a group of people in a channel, like color Henrietta Green. That's a channel. Color Penfield Green. Color Irondequoit Green. Those are channels. They contain 20, 30, 40 people all working together, all collaborating. However, if you look down a little bit, you'll see something that says direct messages. Direct messages is not technically a channel. It's, it's really a direct communication between you and one or more other people. And they can be across many channels. In other words, I could talk, I, I'm in color pencil green, but I can have a direct message with Jim Tappan and do often, and we're not even in the same groups. So I can ask for and provide messages in a direct message to someone else, up to eight different people can be in a direct message. Okay, so that's a bit of a tour. I'll go into the live system right now and show you how that looks, okay? So hopefully you can all see this. This is the, the, the bar, uh, the channel uh, bar over here. Up top, there is the name of our workspace, Climate Solutions Accelerator. Notice the down arrow allows me to do things. We're gonna talk about some of the things that we can do with the down arrow here. And we have a, a couple of topics, threads, mentions and reactions, saved items, more. I'll talk about some of these as we go through the course of the evening. Then we have channels. These are the channels that I am a member of. I'm logged in as a training student user, training student user. That's how I'm logged in. So these are the channels that I am a member of, okay? Now you can close and open the channel bar. As you slide across to the right, you'll see a little ellipsis. If you click on that, it gives you a bunch of options, okay? If you see the plus sign, that allows you to actually add a channel, which you may not want to do right away. <laughs> we'll talk about why you might add a channel. But typically, other folks have been adding channels that you want to join. Down the road, it may be such that you would like to add a channel yourself, which is possible. Okay, So that's channels. Then I have direct messages. And you can see here, I'm training student user, and then I'm direct messaging with, who else? Al Hibner, <laughs> okay. And I'll show you uh, creating a direct message with one of you a little bit later, okay. And down below here, we have something called apps, applications. Slack can connect to other types of software like Google Drive, which we'll show you in a bit and other applications that work with Slack. Now, this is not so important in the basic level, the starting level, the initial level, but it does become more important down the road for advanced usage of Slack, connecting other applications to it. So the areas you're most concerned about are the channels and the direct messages. That's where you're gonna spend most of your time, channels and direct messages. When you're in a channel, like test channel, if I click on test channel, it turns blue. Then on the right-hand side are all of the messages for that channel. If I go to color your community green Penfield Town Square, notice it's bold white, but there's no circle. If I click on that, what it means is a new message today was recently posted this happens to be a video of a, a, a meeting of a committee in Penfield, the Energy and Environmental Advisory Committee. I've been waiting for a week for that video. I want that video. I got to watch it. <laughs> okay. I really have to. And when I click off now, what happened to color Penfield Green Town Square? What happened? It dimmed. Why did it dim? Because I've read all the messages. I'm up to date on all the new messages. That's how this works. It, bold means there's messages. Red circle means there's specific messages for me. 
And when it's dim, you've read all the messages. There are no new messages for that channel. Okay. The message bar is down here. And yeah, I'm going to enter. I'm going to ask answer that question about how come I can't press enter. <laughs> there's a there's a trick to that. There's a secret to that. I'll teach you the secret when we do enter a message. Okay. And the message bar has a bunch of um, formatting controls down below here, which I'll show you as well, along with some other controls on the right hand side of the message box. So. Uh, in a channel, I'm in the test channel, we've got the message bar at the bottom. And up top, we have the ability to click on who's in this channel, who are the members of this channel, so I can see who's in that channel. And I, by the way, all of you have rights to do this. All of you can invite other people into your channel. Let me show you again how I did that. Up on the right-hand side, I can see who the members are, but if I click the little weeble looking plus sign here, add people, boom, then I can enter an email address and add that person into this channel. So I can invite people outside of Slack, I can to join a channel. And then there's an information sign up here to show channel details. And we're gonna spend a lot of time in some of these details here over the course of the next hour and a half. So I'm just showing you the I symbol information, show channel details. And there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not gonna cover all of it, but most of it I will talk about. Okay. So that's the tour of Slack. Consists of a, a menu bar on the on the left hand side, where you choose the channel or direct message you want to participate in, and then the message area on the right hand side, where you actually interact with and create new messages. Any questions on the look and feel and the environment, the Slack environment? Any questions so far? Okay, let's let's continue on. Okay, so a couple of you are not yet in Slack. What I wanted to do was to show you the process of joining Slack. Okay, how do I join it? And I create an account in Slack. So um, I guess the folks that have not joined it, if you can kind of chime in, have you been invited yet? Those of you who are not yet in it, have you been sent an invitation? Do you know if you got one? I, I was invited out, but I, when I tried to join, this was several weeks ago, I ran into a roadblock. There was something I didn't know how to fill out and I was busy doing other things. And so time passed on by. Oh, okay. All right. So, all right, we may, I, I may have to work with you directly if you have problems again uh, on that, okay. because I'm, I'm not gonna go into actually running the whole process of joining, I'm yeah. gonna talk about it. So if you have, if you have yeah. a consistent problems, just, just to, you know, call yeah. me or email me or something and we'll set up a time to get you into Slack. Okay. okay. But do you recall, Elizabeth, that you got an email that looks something like this, where it had a join now button? Does that look familiar to you? Uh, I'm not sure. I got an email inviting me to, but then okay. I... Yeah, well, this not... is, I just sent this today. So this is okay. currently how it looks. Okay. If, if you okay. haven't been in Slack yet, when you get an invitation, it will show join your team, Climate Solutions Accelerator, climategfl.slack.com. That's the web address for joining Slack, okay? And then there's a button, a purple button to join now. That's what you click on. And I think Elizabeth, you remember doing that, but something else yeah. interceded. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which we now, a quick reminder is that does that email come from the person who invited you to join? Yes. Or is it the Alan okay. Hibner sent this, has invited you to wow. use that. Okay. Right. Okay. And also, also the person inviting, and that's me, can type a custom message. 
So I can even inform you that I am inviting you to Slack. Please accept it. Blah, da, be, bada, be, bada, be, whatever. Okay. Yeah, so right. it's possible that I can even send you a note when I invite you. Okay. Yeah. I didn't do anything about it today. I've been out all day. So. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll try it again. At we'll another get it. We'll, we'll make it work. You said it. It's easy to get in. Overall, yeah. it is. And this okay. is the bottom part, the same email. I didn't have enough space to put the whole thing in one shot here. But at the bottom of that email that you will receive, Elizabeth, and I can resend it for you. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got to make a note to resend it. Okay, resend. Resend invite. Okay. Uh, at the bottom of that, there's a, a, a link to click on to learn more about Slack. So that's, that's pretty much, this is exactly what you get okay. when you are invited in and then the join process, obviously something went wrong for you that you weren't quite sure what to do. So we'll figure there that out. There was something I was supposed to identify and I didn't know how to do that. Ah, okay. <laughs> so. Well, you have, to, you have to create, you confirm your email address that you were invited with and then you sign in and you pick a good password. So that's, that's yeah. definitely some of the- That was what I was expecting, yeah. Yeah, okay. But there's something else that happened, which we'll get yeah. to the bottom of. All right, and then I see how I blithely say here, follow the steps to finish creating your account. Well, Al, what steps? <laughs> I don't have them all in pictures. So if you're having trouble, uh, I'd be glad to help you. <laughs> okay, any other, any other questions about this invitation process, chapter two of 12? Okay, moving on. Oh, one more thing that I forgot. And this goes to a question we had a bit ago. Um, you are able to download Slack to your computer, whether it's a Macintosh or Windows, I don't care. I strongly recommend you do this. You can download Slack and run it on your computer. And there's a reason why it makes good sense to do that. It is called the desktop application. And the reason it is excellent, if you install the desktop, Macintosh or Windows, doesn't matter. If you install the desktop, you see notifications coming up on your computer all the time that you're at the computer. You know if you have new messages instantly. It is a way for you to receive feedback quickly that notifications have of new messages are, are there for you, are, they're waiting for you. So at the times that you're connected to your computer, you can get to Slack in about one second just by clicking on the little um, Slack icon on the bottom of your Windows toolbar or on Macintosh, okay? Um, Al, would the same be true um, on an iPad? Yes. Yes, um, you can also install it on an iPad or a Android tablet or an iPhone or an Android phone. And you'll notice here, when you go to this address, slack.com slash downloads, it's, it's gonna tell immediately, if you do this on your computer, it will tell whether or not you have Windows or Macintosh, it just knows. And it brings up the right, right desktop. So then you just do a download and you get your desktop going, I strongly, strongly recommend you all do this. But also you can at the bottom stay in sync by uh, going to this address on your phone, uh, slack.com downloads, and then downloading it or going to the app store. You can go to the app store, the Apple app store, search for Slack and download the Slack desktop client for your phone. I strongly, strongly recommend you do this. <laughs> Okay. Um, do both of the so, Al, question. I Go have ahead. the app. I have the app on my um, iPad. Great. But I'm not currently receiving notifications. So there must no. be something else I need to do. Luann, we have to go over that's chapter four or five or six. I'm gotcha. Sure. Okay. I'll hold on. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's now that you have it installed, there's more. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so any questions? The recommendation for me is on your Macintosh, 
or Windows computer, definitely install the desktop client. Tr trust me, it is so much faster to bring up Slack if you install the desktop client. All you do is punch, click on the little icon on the bottom in Windows and wherever it is in Macintosh. And Slack opens up in a matter of a millisecond, a few milliseconds right there. Plus, it notifies you. You can be sitting on a computer doing a word processing document or an email, and you'll see a little notification of a Slack message, including who sent it and the first two sentences. That's nice. That's really nice. Questions about the desktop and the smartphone applications. Any questions? I, I, you know, if you need help getting them installed, call me. But I think you can do it yourself because it really, you just install it and then you log in with your email and password. Okay. <clears throat> now, chapter three, what are channels? Okay. So I'm going to explain channels uh, by using a flow chart that I think makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. It really, really does. A channel is a group of people who are either together all the time or together once in a while, ephemeral or permanent, who want to talk about something together as a group, who want to collaborate. A channel is a group of collaborative individuals, in my definition. Now, let's start at the top. If you see that, uh, by the way, we have shared channels, private channels, and direct messages. So there are three different kinds of channels, and I will explain them for you as we move through this flowchart. Okay. So if we start, and I'm thinking about how I want to communicate to one or more people, how do I want to talk to them inside Slack? I got a bunch of choices. Well, the first choice is hey, is this an individual or a group? <laughs> Simple. If I just want to talk to Jim about something, then I'm going to use a direct message. Does that make sense? I'm just going to go say, hey, Jim, I need X, Y, Z for CCL next week, blah, 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 blah. I just want to talk to Jim, or I just want to talk to Luann or Linda or whoever. So if it's one person, then it's a direct message. And you'll see how these work coming up in a bit. Now, if it's a group, it's more than one person. Here comes the next big question. Is it casual? Casual means non-permanent. It means I need to talk to Jim and Luann and Deb about a topic that may we may need to converse about it for two or three days, one day, a week. It's not permanent. It's casual, it's impermanent. If it's casual and it's less than eight people, then I can create a direct message with, with four, five, six, seven people or two. That direct message now uh, at some point will kind of drop off your list on the left-hand side. Now, the, the, the messages will not be lost. They are permanently archived. But the actual listing of Al and Jim and Luann and Linda, four people in a direct message, that on the left-hand side, that will, after a period of days, that will kind of fade away or drop off. Doesn't mean that you can't find it again and use it again. You can, and everything that you wrote messages are retained. It just means it's ephemeral. It fades off into the night sky. <laughs> okay. So if it's casual, it's under eight people. It's a group, group, group direct message. <clears throat> now, if it is not casual, if it is a group of people who need to talk together and work together permanently, think about color Penfield Green, color Arondequite Green, color Henrietta Green. Those are permanent groups of people that channel must stay around all the time. It can't fade away. So if it's, if it's 
will it be around for a long period of time? If it's no, <laughs> back to group DM, okay? But if it's yes, all right, it's a channel, check. It's a channel, done. A channel is a permanent collaboration. Now people can come and go from within the channel, but the channel itself does not disappear unless, by the way, I'm, I'm a Slack administrator, so I'm a Slack god. <laughs> I can make a channel archive so you can't find it. <laughs> but the point is, until it's archived, the channel is permanently there. People come and go, but the channel stays. Okay. So now, next question. Okay. Now, is the stuff we're talking about public or private? Huge question. Let me give you an example. Jim and I do this all the time with Citizens Climate Lobby. We actually lobby our elected officials. We talk to them about bills that we care about that we want them to endorse. It must be a private channel. When we're lobbying Congressman Morelli, we cannot let, we cannot let the public, anybody in Slack, we can't let them know what we're talking to him about. We need to keep his confidence and we need to keep it within our own small group of people that are a member of that lobby channel, lobby Congressman Morelli. Okay. There might be other cases with color Henrietta Green where you're talking about very private communications that you want to make with your, with your town board. You might want to make that a private channel, color Henrietta Green town board communications. I don't know. I'm just coming up with an example. And it would not be consumption for, for consumption by the wider public. Okay, so if it is private and you say, yeah, it's a lobby channel for uh, the local staff of Senator Schumer. Yep. Are you sure? Yep. It's private. It becomes a private channel. Now, here's the thing about a private channel, folks. Once you set a channel as private, that cannot be undone. We cannot go back and make it public. It is permanently then a private channel. Simple. If you wanted to open it back up to the public, you would actually have to create a new channel and keep it public. Now, if it's not to be a private group, then it's a public channel. And by the way, color Iranda Quake Green and color Henrietta Green are public channels. So anybody in the Slack workspace, anybody of the 400 plus people, can join, can find and join your channel, okay? That's the definition of public. Anybody can find it, anybody can join it. Private, it must be by invitation only. So if I'm in the lobby, if I'm head of the lobby team for Congressman Morelli, then I have to actually put Jim, if Jim's on that team, I have to say Jim is a member, I put him into the, this particular channel. Okay, now that was a lot to consume, but does it make sense? Are there any questions? Okay, looks like it does. I'm not seeing any questions. Excellent, let's keep going. <clears throat> All right, now, so you're in Slack, you understand channels and direct messages, uh, maybe you're in color Rhonda Gray Green, but you'd like to see what color uh, Henrietta Green is doing. Okay, it's possible for you to cross and join channels at will, and then you can leave them too. You can join, see what's going on, say, yeah, that's great. I'll stay or no, I've seen enough. I'll leave. <laughs> it's like going in the door and then going back out the door. Okay, you can do both. So I'm going to show you the steps, tell you the steps here. Then I'm gonna show you the steps for joining a channel, okay? Well, step number one, I'm gonna to go to that purple area, channels. I'm gonna hit that three dots. It's gonna bring a list of choices. One of them is browse 
channels, browse channels. Then I type in something I know about that channel. Maybe it's uh, Henrietta. I type in the name Henrietta to see what channels have the name Henrietta in them. And it takes me to the channel. And once I get to the channel, I have a green button to join it. Simple, simple. That's four steps. Let's see how that works. Okay. So here it is. I just told you the steps. I am now going to actually do those steps. I go to channels, to the three dots. I browse channels. Okay. Now I can search for channels and I'm going to type in Henrietta. Okay. And I'm going to press enter. No results. What's going on? Ah, okay. I don't know what's happening. Let me type a rondecoid. I'm desperate. <laughs> Much better. All right, so now uh, what, uh, what I want you to notice is notice the pound sign next to CYCG, Rondequoit Town Square, planning next meeting, food waste, community garden, healthy alternative lawns. The pound sign indicates that these are public channels. Pound sign equals public. If you look at the left-hand side here, and I don't know why we did this, we're going to probably change it, but our town square channel for color Penfield green has a lock symbol next to it. That means it's private. Katie Rigg and I have talked about the fact that we need to, I don't know why we did this. I think it was a mistake, but we're gonna have to create a new town square channel and make it public and then archive this one. Okay. Al, we kind of started that in Arondequoit too. Yeah. We, had a, we, had a pub, we had a private channel that uh, about five or six of us were kind of getting things together yep. before we started. And we wanted to keep that just with us. But that's fine. We realized that's that nobody else could get into it. That's right. That's perfect. Okay. So now here we are. And I want to see, now I'm a member of Color Penfield Green. I want to see what's going on in Color Around Quite Green. So I highlight it, click on it. And then underneath here, notice there's the four step green button join channel. Bingo. I'm in it. And oh, by the way, look, it added that channel to my list of channels. Pretty cool, huh? Now I can go back to that channel anytime and find out what's going on in our fellow Color Your Community Green groups. Not sure why Henrietta uh, who is Linda? I'm not sure why Henrietta didn't show up yet. <laughs> unless, unless Pat Wartinger has made it private. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> By the way, you can't see, you cannot find private channels. And that makes a lot of sense. Think about it. It's private. It's invitation only. Invitation only. Okay. Any questions? So you've now seen the steps, four steps on how to join a channel. So logically, what would the next chapter logically be? How do I leave a channel? No offense now, Jim, but I'm gonna leave your channel. <laughs> you're muted, you're muted, that's okay. All right, so what I need to do, again, I'm going to sh tell you and then show you the steps and you have to practice all these things, folks. So I'm going to select the channel I want to leave and click on it in the sidebar. Now I'm going to click that little info button at the top right. You'll see me do this in a minute. I'm going to click on the three dots, the little more button. And then at the very bottom, it will say leave and channel name, leave channel name. So let me, let me show you how that works. Now, maybe I've been reading something in this channel and I said, oh, you know, I really, 
I got too many channels. I'm not spending any time. No offense, Jim. No offense. <laughs> okay. I'm not spending a lot of time reading what Rhonda Coit is doing. So, you know, I may come back in later because I can come in and out as often as I want. But for now, I'll just take it off my list. So what do I do? I go up to the information symbol. That's channel details. I click on the three dot icon. And there it is. Leave. Color your community green around a quite town square. Leave it. Here we go. I'm about to click it. Here we go. Bang. Now, close the channel details. And it has been removed from my list of channels. It's gone. Doesn't mean I can't go back. I can anytime I want and come back in and see what Jim is up to with his group. I can do that. Jim, you can't come into color your community Penfield Green. <laughs> Unless it's by invitation. <laughs> okay. Any questions on joining and leaving public channels? Okay. Now, before we go into notifications, I'm going to hang back for just a moment and talk a little bit about direct messages, show you what a direct message is. Okay, so I'm, I'm moving down. This is my channel list, all the channels I'm a member of. And it's, it's up to you. You need to maintain this list. You need to add and delete, add and join and leave channels so that you only have the ones you care about. Don't have too many channels. Trust me, <laughs> it gets really confusing <laughs> and it's overkill. Only prune that list, keep it really tight. Now, direct messages, okay. So a direct message works pretty similar. I come over to the three dots and I can browse old direct messages that I had. Or better yet, I can add a new direct message. So I want to add one with Jim. Okay. So up here, I type his name. Sorry, Jim, I'm picking on you tonight. <laughs> so now I've got Jim. Now I can stay there and I can add more people. I could add Luann. Why not? Let's do it. That's kind of cool. Now I'm up to two people in a direct message. And I'm going to go for it. I'm going to add Deb. Yeah. I now have a group of three people in this class that is a direct message. Now, when I press enter, watch now. I'm going to press enter. And Slack says, this is the very beginning of your direct message history with these three people. So I can say, hello. We are messaging from our training class, period. Okay, now I'm gonna answer that question about how come every time I press enter, it's another message. And I'm gonna give you a trick and get ready to write this down. If, 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 if you want to put a line into a message, hold the control key down and press enter. Look at that. Look at that. Hold the control key down and press enter. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> but now notice. I didn't know that. Oh, no. right. So finally, um, finally, Jim, it took only an hour before you learned something new, for God's sakes, Hale. Get going, <laughs> will you? Okay. I found if you press enter twice, the nope. first time it takes you out to the message. Nope. Control enter. All right. That's now, a much better way. <laughs> also, folks, this is like word processing. If you highlight it and you click bold and italic, et cetera, all that good stuff, you know, you can start to format it. So now if you say choice one, 
choice one, go to the beginning of it and hit the little bars there. Look at that. Look at that. You can make numbered lists or indented lists, and you have to keep control enter. Choice two. Look at that. I'm building a pretty cool document here. Got it? So, Inside Jim, now a now, message. Inside now, Jim, a message. So, Question. Alan, let's just say instead of saying you want hello, we are messaging from our training class, you want to change that to hi. Instead okay, of hello. so I'm going to position my cursor like WordPress at processing. Hello, I am. Hit my delete. And just start typing. Now, I have not, Deb, I have not yet pressed enter to save the message. Okay. I'm right. going to do that. And then I'm going to show you how you edit the message after saving it, which is the question you had. Well, I, I just, no, even while I was typing it, I'm sorry, what did, what did you do to do that again? Okay, so I just moved the cursor to where I need to start typing. I don't know, I couldn't get the cursor to go any place other than at the, the, the end of it, the last sentence. Oh no, while you're typing it, you should be able to move it anywhere in that message and keep mm -hmm. edit, 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 edit. You gotta keep practicing that. Again, if that doesn't work for you, Call me. We'll figure it right. out. Zoom call okay. with you. No, see, it's working for me. Right. Yeah, Deb, Deb, what you need to do is move your curse. Just move your cursor with your mouse to yeah. where you want to be and, and, you, and click. And click. Right. And that's where your cursor will be. If you then start typing, it'll type there. You Correct. can delete or backspace or whatever. Right. Now, um, in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead now and hit the enter key. Or, or I can also click the green arrow, which is send message, bang. Now that message has been sent. Here's some magic. If you go to the three dots, more actions, slacks, three dots, there's more stuff you can do. You can click edit or delete your own message. Edit message. Now I'm in the edit and I can start typing again. Boom, and then save changes. If you wrote the message, you have power. You can edit or delete it. And you do that by going to more actions, clicking edit or delete. Okay. Any questions? So, Alan, if you, you're going back to edit, so yep. you're putting in something, then you don't have to do the control enter because oh, you no, already... no. yes, you do. Yes, you control enter. So if I want to mm -hmm. add choice three, I control enter. Okay. Choice three, control enter, choice four. Yeah, I mean editing is just like you're entering the message for the first time, Linda. Okay, thank you. Yes. And then when you're finished editing, and you can edit any time permanently because you wrote the message. You can fix it any time. And Al, we wouldn't know we have that message unless we open the Slack app. You now would have to be in Slack. Now, here's the cool thing. We're going to talk about notifications after the break, Luann. Okay. But you can get an email sent to you about this message. And, and gotcha. we'll, we're going to learn how to do that in just a few minutes. Okay, after our break. Sounds good. Any questions on entering, editing, deleting? Now, if I don't like it, I can delete the message. <laughs> I don't think I will because I want to keep it. Or, But if I made a mistake, okay, I pressed enter too soon. You know, everybody does that, right? Okay. Oh, I don't want that message. I got to edit that. I don't want that at all. So I come in here and I hit delete, delete, and delete. Gone. You can fix your mistakes. You can fix your mistakes. Trust me. You can fix them. Any questions? All right. Now we're at step six. It's eight o'clock. How about a 10 minute break, folks? Okay. 810, 810, 810. 811, 810. Do mute your mute your microphones. And I'm going to stop the recording here. I'm going to pause the recording. Um, we'll stop the sharing. Mute your microphones. 
and um, mute your cameras. We'll see you back at 810. Okay. Yeah. And actually, before I get into part six, which will answer a lot of your questions about how come Slack is not telling me about these messages? Okay. Before I get into that, I want to go back and, and do something for Luann. Luann, this is for you. Okay. So I'll go back to that direct message that we had, the one with Deb, Jim, and Luann. And what I want to do is something that will help you do what you asked me to do the other day. If I go into... Um, I go into a browser and I bring up color penfield green. Okay. This is the color penfield green website. Would you agree, Luann? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now watch what I'm doing up top. I'm copying the URL, right? The web browser link control C. Okay. I'm copying the link. This is what you had me to do for you. You can do it yourself now. And I'm going to go into the message for the three of us. And when you copy a link, just paste it here. See what I'm doing, Luann? Mm -hmm. Control V. See that link? Now, right. watch the magic. When I press the green arrow or press enter, Slack is magic. What did Slack just do, Luann? It um, sent us the link. Yeah, well, it did better than that. It has a little icon and a name of a website, and it's excellent. <laughs> okay. Right. So, Luann, in the future, if you simply paste a link, you can introduce it ahead of time and then paste the link. You're done. Wow. Does that answer the question for what you asked me to do the other day? Well, not really, because it wasn't the link to color pen field green. It was about that petition. But it doesn't matter what link it is. It'll all work. Oh, so any link. Okay. Any link. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't make that clear. Yeah. Any URL to a legitimate website. Mm-hmm that you paste in here, article, website, whatever, um, it, it, Slack will expand it to show you the, the, the information underneath that web page. Okay, and do you happen to know, is that something I can do on my iPad also? Yes. I can, okay. Yes, yes. If, if you know how to copy and paste, you're done. You can right. do it. Okay. That's all you have okay. to be able to do is copy and paste. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so I'm running behind here. Okay, uh, how do we get notifications of new messages? So this is a key question that a lot of you have been asking about. And Slack by itself is not gonna do this for you. By default, notifications are pretty much turned off. Okay, so you need to come in here and control notifications the way you want them to be set up for your use of Slack. All right, so how do we do that? Well, if you go to Climate Solutions Accelerator and you drop down that little down arrow carrot, you choose preferences, and then you go to notifications, all right? So we're gonna talk about these. Slack can notify you from every channel now, every single channel that you're in. It can notify you about every single new messages don't do that. <laughs> That's insane. Okay. I would not do that. Just don't do that. Okay. Direct messages, mentions, and keywords. That's perfect. That's sweet. Or what's the third choice? Nothing. <laughs> so, you know, all new messages is Papa Bear. Nothing is Baby Bear. So what's mama bear? Right in the middle, it's direct messages. That means messages to me directly. Mentions where Jim types in at Al Hibner in one of his messages because he wants me to know about it. 
and keywords. We'll talk, keywords is less used. But direct messages and mentions, that's important stuff, stuff you should pay attention to. So that's how your preferences should be set. So you go to the top. Let me demonstrate it now. You go to the top, Climate Solutions Accelerator. Click that little down arrow. Choose Preferences. And Notifications is the very first thing that you see. And you probably want it set this way. Now, I think that's set that way by default. That's good. Still doesn't explain why you're not getting notifications, but I can I can tell you why. Okay, any questions so far? All right, now there are other choices and you may not be able to absorb these while I'm telling you about them, but you may wanna come back to the, the videos. By the way, I'm gonna split the videos into chapters. So we'll have a playlist and you can look at just a chapter on notifications or just a chapter on channels or just a chapter on joining or leaving or whatever you wanna look at. So I'll be splitting into 12 different videos and then you can click on any one that you wanna watch. <clears throat> All right, now, if you have mobile devices like an iPad or an iPhone or an Android, you can set these settings different. Maybe on the iPad or iPhone, you don't want any messages or you want all. You can make it different for the mobile devices. Notify me about replies to threads. Now I haven't talked about threads yet. So hold, let's hold off on that one for a moment. And then lastly here, each channel that you're in can have different rules. You can override these rules channel by channel by channel. So some channels are more important than other channels. You may wanna have all messages from a very critical channel and no messages, no notifications from a channel that you don't really care much about but that you come in occasionally look at it. So you can vary your notifications by channel. Now, hey, Al, one, one real quick question. Yes. If I say I don't want notifications from a channel, yep. um, I'm still seeing the channel in my list of channels. Oh, of course. And it's, and it's going to be it bold. Highlight? It will be bold if there's messages that you are new to you. Okay. And Thank by you. the way, there'll be a little red bubble if there's direct mentions of you, Jim, that you haven't checked yet. You're going to have the bold and the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. it won't be notifying you. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. So now, how the heck am I notified? It, this, this doesn't happen automatically. Okay. And trust me, this works. I know it works. I use it. So if you have the desktop available, if you've, if you've installed it, and I advise that you do on your Macintosh or your Windows. I really, really strongly recommend that you do it. If you install the desktop, seriously, folks, if you do it, then you will receive, and you also have it on your iPad or your iPhone or your Android phone. If you have both the desktop and the app on the phone, then Slack really makes life pretty easy. It will send notifications. If you, if you log out of your computer and shut it down, but you wanna get important notifications while your computer's off, they will go to your mobile phone after you've been act inactive for X number of minutes. And, and, <laughs> If you want important emails to be sent to you when your name is mentioned or a direct message from Al comes through or Jim or Elizabeth, check on send email notifications. That is not checked on by default. So if, if there's an important direct message, you have to turn that on in order to get it on your email. It won't happen with the, without you're doing this. Okay. So let me repeat. 
I've installed the desktop. Al told me to. I installed it on my smartphone. Al told me to. Great. Now, I shut down my desktop at 8.30. But Jim has a critical message for me at 9 o'clock, half an hour later. Bing! It's on my phone. Comes to my phone. Simple as that. This works, it works, it works. It really, really does work. And you got to test and, and play with this to get it to be the right combination for you of notifications, too many. You got to find the mama bear sweet spot just right. The temperature is just right. The porridge is just right. <laughs> you got to find the that right. That was the level. baby bear, by the way, Al. What's that? Baby bear was the one that it was just right. I thought it was Mama Bear. <laughs> I was a second grade teacher. I read a lot of fairy tales. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. So, <laughs> all right. So now I got to trash this recording and start all over again, Luann. It's going to be another two hours tonight. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. That retraction and correction was on video. Okay. <laughs> all right. So the point is, Unless you turn these on and adjust them to meet your needs, you ain't getting messages. Not going to happen. Okay. So <clears throat> what, does, what does Slack send you? This is what Slack sends you right here. If there's a message that meets your requirements of being something very important. Now, Slackbot is an automated message sender that, is direct messages to me about stuff I want to remember to do. So Slackbot saying, hey, Al, you asked me to remind you about this message from this channel. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> I can open Slack. I can reply. If I can actually reply in email. Let's say a message comes from Linda. And it's important. It's directed right at me. I can, on my phone, without even opening up Slack, but in my email, I can reply and it goes back to the channel so Linda can read it. Okay. So not only that, but Slack lets you manage your notifications. You can snooze them. And it's giving you all the information to allow you to click and sign in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, folks, this is pretty cool. If you have email turned on, now you, you need to be working to make sure you get the right level of notifications and emails. But once you fine tune it, you can be notified by email anytime. This is sweet. Questions, you gotta try this. You got to try this. So let me go back to the live software again. So this is down here. <clears throat> when I'm not active on my desktop, send notifications to my phone or iPad every every one minute. That's insane. I mean, it's like, okay, you know, I'm I'm addicted to Slack. <laughs> okay. I've got a Slack addiction. Uh, and then there's this one. Send me email. And now, I prefer once an hour. I don't want to get them every 15 minutes. I wish they had choices for once every four hours, but, you know, they haven't done that yet. <clears throat> but the point is, this is now turned on. So any time I'm not watching Slack or logged in, I'm going to get emails. Okay. Now, you, you, don't, you don't have to turn this on. But if you're wondering why you're not getting emails, this is why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why right there all right and i wanted to talk a little bit about channel specific notifications which we'll get into here in a minute okay now channel by channel i can control the level of notification so for example if there's a channel with extensive usage lots and lots and lots of usage like all calls to action it's constantly getting messages, constantly getting messages, all calls to action. If I go up to the I, the information, and I choose the more button, and this is going to, I'm actually repeating information that I'm going to cover here in another minute, but I'm doing it ahead of time. 
if I go to change notifications for this channel, now this is channel by channel, then I can say, no, 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 don't notify me. Do not notify. I'll come in and check this channel when I want to. I will come and check it when I'm ready to check it. That's what this does. This overrides the default setting and be, makes it, this action specific to this channel. So if you're getting too many notifications, come in here, channel by channel, turn them off. That'll make you more comfortable using Slack. You got to do these things. Okay, questions? All right, so guess what? I got ahead of myself. I did seven before seven. <laughs> okay. How do I get, I, I just answered it. So we'll, I'm gonna show it to you again or tell you about it again. So you go to the channel that you're getting too many notifications for, click on that channel, click on the I information, click on the three dots, click on the change notifications, the blue change notifications down below, and then you fill it in the way you want to, all, none, or just right. Baby bear. <laughs> okay. So you can do that channel by channel by channel. And if you only have five or six channels and you do this, you're gonna get just the right amount of notifications that make it make sense to you because a lot of people get burned out or angry at Slack, but they haven't done this work to adjust it to their needs. I trust me, that's going to help. Questions? Linda, go. Are you saying that if I want to find out what different groups are doing, but all I want to know is about what you're doing about let's say solar panels. Are you saying that I can set up my settings so I only get notifications about discussions about solar panels? So would you like to do that, Linda? Yeah, I think I would. Oh, then I think I'll give it to you tonight, but tonight only, tonight only. <laughs> it's, it's a sale, but I will give it to you tonight only if that's okay with you, right? Here's how you do that, watch. This is insanely good. Okay, so if I go down to preferences again, there's something called keywords. Okay. Now this, this doesn't limit it to one channel, Linda. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not giving you the whole thing. But if I put a keyword in here and I can have as many keywords as I want, what do you think Linda will happen? So I will just get notifications then just on messages that have those words, right? God, you're good. You're really good. <laughs> That's excellent. I could not have said it any better. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> that is correct. Yes, absolutely. And so that did that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. This is a way to fine tune. Now you'll, you'll get all the other notifications, direct messages at mentions, but you'll also get notifications when these words are referenced in a message. Nice. So Al, just one comment. If you put in solar panels, that, those are actually two keywords. So panels will show up anytime <laughs> panels comes in. Yeah, you're right. So maybe I want to adjust it later when I'm getting too many gyms. So you're doing it exactly right. So I want to remove the word panels. Right. So, so Ellen, if, if, she, will she get it, a notification, just the groups that she's in or would it like, the, or any group that's out no, there? Just the groups, the channels that you're in. Right. It's not going to range beyond channels that you don't, that you're not a part of. That would be overkill. That's too much information, too much. Okay, beautiful. Great. So, uh, Linda, you were my plant tonight. You asked the question that I forgot to cover. So, thank you. Your check will be in the mail. 
<laughs> Other questions? That was a good one. That's how you get different notifications from different channels. Okay. Now, when you're typing in a message, how do you make sure that the people that you want to see it actually see it? How do you make it elevate it to the level of a direct message or an at mention or what have you? So that's our next topic here. Okay, so here are the steps. When you are typing in your message, you start by typing the at symbol and the name of the person you would like to directly notify. That's called a at mention. And you can have as many of those people as you want. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. And then if you're particularly aggressive, you can use an at mention called at channel. That notifies everybody in the channel. So everybody gets a red bubble. That's a really, really important message. I advise you not to use it a lot use it for the really critical things. For example, when you're announcing the date of a very important meeting for color Henrietta Green or color around quite green, you will most likely put an at channel before you type in all the information about the meeting or the minutes or the notes. Those are at channel types of messages. Jim uses those. Okay. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, in a channel, you do an at mention. I'll demonstrate it in a minute. In a direct message, that automatically becomes an at mention. Anytime I would direct message Jim, he's going to get a red bubble. He would also get an email if he's turned on the emailing feature because and selected notifications from direct messages and at mentions. So here's how it works. So I'm going to go into this direct message that I've been messing around with. And actually, I don't need to do it in a direct message. I'm going to go into my test channel and I'm going to type at Jim Tappen. Boom. So you, you select it with your cursor in a space bar at Al Hibner. Click on it. Notice how it's kind of turning blue there, like, an, like a URL, like a website address. And then I'm going to do at channel. notify everyone in this channel. That's a different color, that's yellow. Now, once I, will be notified. Okay, I can't type properly. All right, so I'm gonna hit the green arrow and What's happened is Jim and Al and at channel, everybody in this channel, which happens to be just Al, <laughs> okay. um, everybody's being notified. All right. So this is raising the level. The importance and urgency of that message has now been promoted to an at mention and people will get it in their emails or get it in their notifications or it will pop up on their desktop applications or it'll turn it'll have a red bubble on their smartphones. So you'll see that this is an important message. Any questions? You really want to try that. And do use at channel very judiciously because it, if you have 50 people in your channel and you use at channel, everyone gets a red bubble. Everyone, if they've got emails turned on, gets an email, okay? So add channels for special messages only. Question. Al, on this, on this specific one, yep. the, the mention is the fact that I was not a member of that channel. And so you have to identify if you want right. to invite me to that yeah. channel, or let me well, know. Yeah, that's exactly not. right. I, I, I missed that, Jim. <laughs> 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 You're right. Slackbot, by the way, Slackbot is an automatic little robot that's kind of letting you know what you're doing wrong. <laughs> of course, Jim, do you want to be in the test channel or let them know or do nothing? <laughs> yeah, <just let> me know. <laughs> okay. Then closes that message. So good.
Good point. I didn't even read that, and you did, and that's excellent. So Slackbot helps you make, correct your mistakes. <laughs> All right, moving on. So how do you make sure people see your messages? Boom, use an at mention, at channel, or direct message. Then any one of those creates the red bubble next to the channel name, any one of those three. Okay, chapter nine. <clears throat> now, um, I think th that along with notifications, this, this chapter number nine is one of the most important. It's so frustrating. You read a message and you say, God, I really want to read that article tomorrow. I can't, I don't have time now. I want to read it tomorrow. Or there's a meeting coming up or an event. Oh man, I want to go to that. But man, I got to dash out of the, the house right now. I... I can't fill this out until tonight. How do I remember to fill it out? By the way, then during the course of the day, that message is lost. It's disappearing up at the top, scrolling way up. So how do you, how do you remember stuff to take action on stuff? So we have a bunch of really cool ways. And I'm going to talk about all three of them. One is called saving message favorites. We click it as a favorite. Number two is setting a reminder to do something. I cannot live. I cannot use Slack without reminders. I can't. It's unusable for me without setting reminders. I, I use reminders every day, all day. And lastly, pinning. An extremely important general message in a channel should be pinned so everybody can find it. So let's take a look at all three of these. Saving favorites setting reminders and pinning. Are you ready for this? Okay, so I'm gonna go to a channel. Here's a, a training channel, okay? So here's the video. Let's, let's pretend that this is the video from the session tonight, okay? Here's the message. So this is the video that Al posted. Oh, wow, whoa. Man, I don't want to lose that. I want to watch it later. How do I remember what, what to do about it? Well, if you come up in that message, there's a little symbol here called add to saved items. Click it. What did it do? Call it out. Anybody? What did it do? Turn red. All right. Okay. Now up top here, if you go to saved items, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Linda, There's you're off. Item. That's the item. Watch, the item watch, watch. you just saved. Yeah, the one I just saved. Watch, watch. Now, if I click it again, what happened? No longer red. If I go to saved items, it's gone. Let me do that again. <laughs> By the way, this is going to save your life. <laughs> so save favorite. Go to saved items. It is there. Woo! How many of you are going to use that, hands? Yeah, are you kidding me? Of course you will. <laughs> Absolutely. Even better. Now I, now I knew how to save it, but I didn't know where to find it. Yep. Under, <laughs> now exactly. <laughs> under saved items. <laughs> All right. Back to that same item. Now, I want to – I. I don't just want to save it as a favorite. I want to remind myself to watch it tonight at eight o'clock. So I go in here and I go, remind me about this. Not in 20, not in one, not in three, not tomorrow, not next week, but custom. Well, how about nine o'clock tonight? Oh, I want to watch it at eight tonight. <laughs> L, watch this L. Watch this movie tonight. No popcorn. <laughs> All right. So create. Oh, I need to select the time in the future. So I need to watch it tonight at uh, 11 o'clock. <laughs> I can't watch it an hour ago. So the point is, 
what the Slack bot will do at 11 o'clock tonight. It's going to wake up and remind me to watch the movie, but no popcorn because I can't eat when I go to bed. <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, where will you see that reminder? If you go to Slackbot under direct messages, and I'm going to give you a tip and trick here because this is how I use it. If you And you can watch the video again to, to get this. If you go slash remind list, slash, type in slash remind list, it brings you up a list of all the reminders you set for yourself and when they should be accomplished. Here's the one, Al, watch this movie tonight, no popcorn at 11 o'clock today. Trust me, you can't use Slack without setting reminders. You just can't use it. It's unusable. It'll be horrifically frustrating. I cannot live without setting reminders. I use them every day, all day long. It helps create a task list of things for me to do important messages. Now, you got to remember to set the reminder when you read it. You say, oh, I want to read that article tomorrow. Oh, I want to sign up for that event tonight. Oh, you must realize that you need a reminder or it'll be lost. Al, what was that again? It was slash reminders. Yeah, slash remind, slash remind, space, list. Okay. And that shows you all the reminders that you set from here to eternity. Now, when you're done, let's say I watch that movie, I can hit complete or I can delete it. So I hit complete. Slackbot's very happy with me that I've completed that task. And lastly, pinning, pinning, pinning. Okay. Sometimes... A message is so important sometimes that what you need to do, and I'm, I'm actually going to unpin this before I pin it. So let me unpin it so I can show you how I pin it. I'm going to unpin it and unfavor it. So now let's say that we have a channel that we want everybody to watch Al's phenomenal training video. I mean, just it's the best. Everybody's <laughs> got to watch it. <laughs> okay. So I want everybody now, you know, everything else, reminders and favorites, that's only for you. That's not for other people. This is for everybody. So now if we come to more actions on this wonderful training video that Al created uh, and you click pin, what it does is it pins it to an area under the details of this channel and if you go up to the channel, you see this little push pin. If you click it, it's always pinned right there. So the important, and these gotta be, these cannot be run of the mill messages. These must be long lasting, permanent messages that people need to reference again and again and again and again. Great example might be, the link to a shared gym, a shared Google Drive folder with all the materials for this channel. That would be a permanent pinned item or like the video or the training guide in my training channels, it's always pinned, always pinned. The most current version of my training, I pin it. So anybody in the channel can find it at any time by clicking the little push pin. So there's a section called pinned items. And if you can unpin the item by clicking on it and it, it warns you, hey, Al, are you sure you want to remove your wonderful training video from this channel? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Any one, other quick, one other quick thing. Um, someone else can unpin your uh, what you've pinned. Yes. But it will it will notify the person who pinned it um, that 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 someone else has, has yep. unpinned that. Yep. 
And, you know, this is a trust within a channel. Yeah. Everybody's a, a collaborating. It's a team. It's a team effort. So, yep. yes. Yep. I hear. Yes, you're right. Okay. <clears throat> now, any other questions on those? Those are super, super important things that you must practice. Saving favorites. Setting reminders and pinning important long lasting items that everybody needs to have access to. So please promise that you will uh, uh, try these different features out because unless you're using these, it's really not, you're not, really not using Slack as it's, as it's intended to be used. Other questions? Okay, so we're, we're, I think we're gonna be okay on time. Now, uh, a while ago, I think it was Linda, Linda, <laughs> it was okay how do i use it as a resource right well you do that by searching like google search do you google search linda oh absolutely of course she does well let's do a google inside slack how about that sure okay so i'll tell you and i'll show you and then you have to practice it yourself this this searching is an art just like google you got to practice this. You got to work at it. It's not instantly going to jump out at you on how to use it. You got to practice it. Hmm. So what you do is you go up to the top of the screen where there's a search bar and you enter a search term. Okay. It's immensely powerful. Seriously, it even, and Linda, you're going to love this. It even <laughs> searches inside documents, PDF documents. Wow. And Word doc, it searches inside documents that files that are attached inside Slack. That's awesome. So you go up here, you type a search term, press enter, and then it anything that matches messages, files, people, and channels, anything that has that search term embedded in it anywhere comes up and then you need to start filtering it down more tightly. This is like going to a shopping site. Remember the left-hand side, you, you keep checking, but oh, I want it to be between $100 and $200 check. Mm. I want it to be the uh, fastest processor Intel i7 check. I want, <laughs> I want it to have 16 gig of RAM, not eight. I want 16, check 16. Now you're narrowing the search down, right? That's what yes. searches inside Slack. All right. And then you start narrowing. This. So let me demonstrate this to you. All right. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to All Town Square. All Town Square, by the way, is the one channel where every single person in Slack, 425 people, all members of Slack from the Climate Solutions Accelerator are in this channel. Then we have town squares for each different group, color, color Henrietta green, color Penfield green, on and on and on. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna click up in the search area. See how I did that up here? It says okay, search. Sure. Climate. Right, so I'm gonna click it. All of you, by the way, all of you are automatically included in this channel. It's the one default channel. There's two, of, two or three of them, but all of you are in this channel. So I'm gonna search in here and um, I'm gonna search for solar because Linda told me to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, whoa, Linda. <laughs> now there are 301 messages with the term solar. There are. Uh, 189 files with the word solar. Yeah, well, I'm going to have popcorn then. <laughs> <laughs> Six people and, of course, one channel, uh, okay, with the word solar in it. Yeah, Reka Community Solar has the name solar in it, right? Right, Jim? Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff, Linda, right? It sure is. So now what I need to do is say, you know, I really wanted to find the stuff that Jim wrote about solar. Mm -hmm. What has that done? How many messages now? 66. Way to go, Jim. You've been prolific on solar. <laughs> 
These these are Jim's That's messages. In my life. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. These are all Jim's messages on solar. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, okay. Um, maybe I need to narrow this down a little bit. Maybe I need to, you know, oh, I want them only in the last three months, Jim. No offense now. I only want your new stuff. No, no, no. 30 days. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. One message in 30 days. Not so prolific, Jim. <laughs> yeah, slow down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go to three months. Let's broaden the search. Oh, four messages. You're doing about one a month. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, conversations. Okay, more filters. Linda, are you yes. getting this? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. Okay, are you going to use this? Oh, you bet. You better. <laughs> <laughs> How about the rest of you? Elizabeth, Deb, Luann, are you going to use this? I'll Remember what I said? Up top, I said searchable log of all community knowledge slack that's what it stands for if you don't use search you're not using slack you might as well not even be in it what what good is it if you don't use search and then you pin stuff set favorites set reminders you're not using slack to its potential you're simply not okay so you've got to come in here you really got to get comfortable with using the search search system so if I, I start undoing the stuff you'll see that i'm i'm widening the search and i'm back to 300 messages 189 files and under files i can actually say i just want to see the pdf files that brings it down to 77 so most of them are pdfs and maybe the pdfs within the last 30 days brings it down to eight files so thank you. Thank you for using the most important tool in Slack, which is search. <laughs> okay. Appreciate that ahead of time. All right. Upload files. And then I'm going to give you your homework, answer some more questions, and we're done. So uploading files is pretty easy. <clears throat> I'll tell you. I'll show you. What you do inside a message, you, in a message on the right hand side, you'll see a little paper clip, a paper clip icon, which is like attaching a file to any email message. Mm -hmm. Same thing. It's no different. And then, then you pick which kind of, where's the file coming from? 99% of the time, most of you, it's on your computer, right? Right? It's a PDF, it's a Word document, it's a PowerPoint. It's a file you have you want to upload into the channel, correct? Okay. Sometimes, however, and Jim's got this interest, it's coming from Google Drive, and I'll talk about that. How many of you have heard of Google Drive? Raise hands. Okay, most people have. Google Drive allows you... The reason to use Google Drive is simple. You want a repository of shared files that everybody can get into. You can have a folder, you can share a folder. Also, large files. You have a limited amount of space inside Slack. So if you load a 10 gigabyte movie file, you're out of luck. You've run out of space. You cannot, you should not load large files in, from your computer. Instead, large files should be put into a Google Drive and shared as a link. Okay, movies, like the movie I'm going to create of this training is probably going to be close to 500 megabytes. Well, that's 5% of my entire Slack. I only get 10 gigabytes of Slack space as a user. If I upload these movie files, I'm using up my space and I'll have to delete stuff. Instead, I'm going to put it in my Google Drive and share the link to the video so you can watch it from my Google Drive. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right. Yes. So let's question. No. 
I'm just saying yes. Okay, great. Sorry. So I'm going to go into my test channel. I'm going to come down here to test channel, click the push pin. I'll choose my computer. And I'm going to go to my desktop where I've preset the PowerPoint PDF. Okay. This is the document that I'm going to email to all of you at the end of this okay. session. So I'm highlighting it from my desktop. Click open. And then I'm typing a message. This is the PowerPoint training guide from class tonight. Period. Okay. Now, when I hit enter, watch what happens. It expands the document and I can click on it and I can read it. There's the PowerPoint right there. Yeah. Okay. So that is, that's how you upload a document. You go to the push pin, you go to the paper clip. Typically you select computer desktop from your computer locate the file please keep them small keep them small <laughs> okay please keep them small uh, don't put in huge files don't upload huge files you will run out of your own personal slack user space instead we choose google drive and if you want to connect to your Google Drive, you're gonna to have to go through what I'm about to show you here. Click OK to connect. <clears throat> it's thinking. And I may not be able to complete this tonight, Jim. Um, I'm not sure how comfortable it's gonna be or you know, with this system here. But bottom line, you would continue on to connect your Google Drive to Slack, and then once you do that, you can find files, you can post files in your Google Drive like this training guide, okay? Let me, let me locate that. And then you can share that file. So if I go to my Slack implementation training, Slack 101 training, here's that file. For those of you who have or not used Google, if you right click and do share. This is Jim, this may be some of your questioning and I'm gonna run a little bit over nine o'clock, not a lot, maybe a minute or two. So if you can hang with me, is that okay for you guys? A few minutes past nine, we'll, we'll be done. No, no question about it. So Jim, I wanna answer your questions. If you want it to be view only for anybody with this link, you change to anybody with the link and you allow them to be a viewer, viewer, viewer. View only means read only. Comment means I can put comments that the owner of the document can incorporate into the document or not. And then editor means I can change the wording if it's a Word doc or a Google doc. I can actually change the wording. So you gotta be very careful if it's viewer which is 90% of the time, then you simply copy that link. Copy, you go back over to Slack and you paste the link. Press enter. Now, until, <laughs> notice, I have did not successfully connect the student user to Google Drive. Until I connect it to Google Drive, to Slack, I'll be able to preview them, um, you know, but, but there's other, I can't connect, I can't connect directly to it and pull them in directly into a message. So I'll say not now at this point, I won't. Imp so it cannot expand it. it. It can't expand it the way it should be because it's my Google drive and I didn't connect my Google drive to Slack which I have to do if I want it to be able to expand files that I'm sharing in my Google Drive. Jim, is this helping at all to answer any of your questions? Um, yes, it is. I've, I've still got some things about Google Drive and how about how I find how I find the shared drives that I have access to and stuff like that. But that's outside of- Let's, um, let's you and I go at yeah. that on a separate call. 
Okay. Yep. Per perfect. That's Excellent. kind of the generic way of attaching. Again, the perfect application for me is I, I store it a large video, this training video. I store it on my Google Drive. Maybe it's even a gigabyte or 10% yep. of my total Slack user allowance. I'm not going to. I'm not going to upload it into a message. So I store it on a Google Drive, then I share it, and people click on it, and they can watch the video from my Google Drive. Done. Check. Yeah, and I, 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 do, uh, I do a lot of Google Drive uh, documents that I upload, so I've got that, that link in there. Right. Um, and that works. It works well. It's just for me trying to find things and search for things in my Google Drive. And okay. Well, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a separate uh, go around on that. Yep. Okay. So question: any questions on uploading files? For most of you on this initial call, it's really uploading from your local computer, a Word document or a PDF mm -hmm. document or whatever it might be. All right. Now... <laughs> You have homework, <laughs> okay? Um, I am going to ask you to cycle back and bottom line, um, th there's learning resources. There's a link in here. If I click this link right now using Slack, it takes you to a website where if you have questions like how do I join a channel, well, of course, I covered that already. But if you have a questions, basically, Slack has the step-by-steps to answer those questions and a lot more topics. So just go around here. How to, like there's edit and delete a message. Where was that? I don't know. The point is Slack has a help system. I can only touch on so much in two hours. If you have additional questions, you can be self-service. You can go and find answers to those questions yourself in the slack.com help system. So I would ask you to try using that and test it out for yourselves. All right, lastly, here's your homework now. <laughs> There were 12 things that we covered and I've shown you, I've told you how they work. I've shown you how they work, but in two hours, there's no way that I can have you do it with me. That'd be another two or three hours of lab work. So I'm asking you in the next day or two or three over the weekend, whatever it might be, take an hour or two or 50 minutes, 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, run through these topics. Practice them, practice them. You've got to do it as fast as possible. Okay, so what I want to do right now is ask for any other questions before we wind up. We're actually at 903, not bad. Uh, anything I did not cover to your satisfaction? I think we touched on most of the topics. Um, I have Plus one question, Al. Yes, Luann. Last week when um, I needed to post that petition, and you know, I didn't know how to do it, so I sent it to you. Is that something I would have posted by putting it in a direct message or at the town square? I put it in the town square. Okay. Yes, it's channel. That's not a direct message because that needs to go out. Well, I'm sorry. It, it, was, it a, was it a selected number of people? Luann? It was something everyone was supposed to vote on, yay but or nay. Ev everyone within what group? within color Penfield Green, all people? I suppose okay. if, if it's then something it, we were talking about putting on right. the Facebook. Then it would be in the Town Square channel. Town Square, okay. Yes, okay. absolutely. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Other questions? All right, any no, other questions? No question, Al, but I wanna tell you that I've now signed up. I, did, I, uh, I downloaded the app on my phone. Wow. And that me right in, so I'm good. Holy mackerel, she did that during training. Gold star. Well, I'm, oh, I've been a multi-processor right for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Where's but my reactions? I need to give you a gold star. <laughs> yeah, but thank you very much because I really didn't have any idea about all of the things that were in it. And so this was very helpful. Yeah, the rest of, was this helpful to the rest of you who were on tonight? 
Okay, yes. wonderful. So well, I'll email you the PDF document that was the PowerPoint that I just did tonight. I'll email that to all of you. I have your email addresses, no problem. And thank you so much for helping to make a video for a lot of other people. So I'm also going to provide you with the link to the YouTube channel playlist. It's going to have 12 little videos, one for each chapter. How's that sound? Cool. All right. Again, thank you, everybody. Let me stop the video at this point here. Let me stop sharing. And we'll stop the recording.